Hi, I'm Aditya. In the world of AI, things change before most of us finish catching up. New tools, quiet breakthroughs and bold shifts, there's a lot happening. But not everything deserves your attention. Every week, I filter out the noise and bring you the updates that actually matter. This week, a few tools worth exploring, updates you might have missed, and a couple of ideas that could change the way you work. Let's get into it. I asked AI one question and the answer stayed in my head all day. There's this prompt going around, what do you know about me that I might not know about myself? I thought it would be a simple reply, but the answer felt personal, like it picked up on things I haven't even said out loud. Then I tried another one. Based on everything you know about me, ask five questions to my future self. And that's when it really hit me. It asked things I've been avoiding for a while, things I've been pushing under the rug because life's been too busy. It was strange, honest and kind of needed. Sometimes a few words from the outside make you pause and check in with yourself give it a try then drop one word in the comments that your reply made you feel you're using chai gpt wrong and it's not your fault most people never learn this trick i'll fix that in 30 seconds it's called the acdq formula and it'll change the way you use chai gpt forever the secret to writing prompts that actually work a is for act uh, tell chai gpt to act like an expert a lawyer a coder a chef uh, whatever you need it instantly shifts the tone and depth of the response c is for context uh, don't just drop a vague prompt uh, treat it like an intern on day one give it the why and the what d is for deep thinking literally ask it think deeply before answering no idea why this works but it does like chat gpt gets into monk mode or something q is for questions ask it to ask you follow up questions if anything's unclear now it's not just a tool it's a smart assistant if you've ever said a chat gpt is not that smart the problem wasn't the tool it was the prompt who said learning to code has to be boring here's how you can game your way to becoming a coding pro yep you can actually learn to code by playing games no boring lectures just pure fun and real skills code combat learn python or javascript through real coding challenges inside a game you write actual code to move your character and complete missions it's perfect for beginners who want results fast Coding game? Already know a bit of coding? Try this. Solve puzzles, build AIs, and compete in real-time coding battles. Supports Java, C++, Python, and feels like you're inside a hacker movie. Flexbox Froggy? CSS giving you a headache? This game makes Flexbox so visual even a frog could understand it. You write layout code to help frogs find their lily pads? Weirdly fun. Super useful. Elevator Saga? This one's next level. Write JavaScript to run elevators efficiently in a building. It sharpens your logic, timing, and problem solving like nothing else. Ideal if you've got some JS under your belt. So if you want to learn coding without feeling like you're trapped in a classroom, stop scrolling, start playing. There's a new AI tool that doesn't just answer you, it understands context, visuals, and even code. If you haven't explored Reka AI, it's time you did. Unlike traditional AI models that operate only in text, Reka allows you to create interactive memory spaces where you can add images, documents, code, and even videos. Think of it as a combination of chat GPT, visual boards like Pinterest, and mind mapping all in one intelligent workspace. You're not just chatting here, you're collaborating with an AI that can interpret visuals, analyze code, and even process video content contextually. And yes, it offers unlimited chats, high quality image generation, a remarkably deeper understanding of code and multimedia inputs possibly more advanced than GPT-4. Tools like this are quietly shaping the future of work. If you are a student, please don't scroll. These five reminders might change how you see your journey. One, stop self-rejecting. You might think, I'm not good enough for that internship or they won't pick someone like me. But here's the truth. When you count yourself out, you block your own growth. Let others decide, not your self-doubt. Apply anyway, pitch the idea, show up. You never know what's possible until you try. Two, go beyond your syllabus. Your classes are just the starting line. Growth happens when you explore beyond textbooks. Join a community, start a side project, learn something new, even if it's unrelated to your field. This is how you discover what truly excites you. Three, embrace every no. Rejections feel personal, but they aren't. They're simply signs that you're stepping outside your comfort zone. Let each one make you stronger, not smaller. Resilience is built through trying again. Four, trust the long game. Success doesn't arrive in a day. It comes from showing up when it's easy, and especially when it's not. Over time, all your quiet efforts will add up to something meaningful. Stay consistent. Five, use your freedom wisely. Right now, you have the time to experiment, to make mistakes, to figure things out. Take risks, uh, try new things. Uh, this is your space to explore without fear. Even if something doesn't work, it'll teach you what does. If you're still watching, you're already doing more than most, you're staying curious. Thanks for tuning in. I'll be back next week with more updates that help you stay one step ahead. Until then, take care and keep learning.